Get it. Keep it. Use it. Clout with Richard Green. And guess who has clout tomorrow all over the country? It's you. When you go and you vote, that is what we do in this country. That is the clout that hundreds of thousands of men and women have died for over the years, if not millions. And we want you to make the right decisions. So we had this first hour talking about Hillary Clinton with her surrogates, and we're now talking about Barack Obama. And we go to the San Francisco area, a dear friend, actor, writer, politically engaged since he was 14 years old and working for Adley Stevenson. He can't possibly be that old. You know him as the scientist on E.T., the real warm friendly guy who we loved, and he's appeared in over 120 films. Peter Coyote, welcome to Clout. Thanks, Richard. So who are you voting for? I'm going to vote for Obama. And tell me why. Now, tell you came to this, as are many of our listeners, through a, a love affair with John Edwards. Yeah, so. and I should, explain, I should explain why I supported Edwards initially. I worked for John. I campaigned for him in seven cities. I introduced him to a number of um, celebrities, among whom Bonnie Raitt and Jackson Brown went out on the road. And we campaigned long and hard for him. We believed in him. And to be fair to Obama, there was only a razor's edge difference between Obama's brilliant uh, blueprint for change, his 60-page statement of policies and programs, was is really brilliant. And had he been more mm, specific in his campaign appearances, you know, stating what program he was going to do and how he was going to do it, I might have flopped on that side of the fence. But the razor's edge difference that had me initially go for uh, John Edwards was that John was calling for full federal funding of elections, and he was against nuclear power, categorically against nuclear power. Most expensive way to boil water anyone's ever invented. (laughs) So I feel a little unseemly because the bed I was in with John Edwards is still warm. And here I am, uh, I'm definitely going to vote for Obama, personally. Um, I've held back from um, going out on the road yet and working for him, as have uh, my friends, and not necessarily because of a reservation about him, but you have to realize that he's a senator from Illinois, and Illinois is the state with the most nuclear power in the United States, and... I don't exactly expect him to come out against nuclear power yet, but we're hoping that he will come out against the loan guarantees to help nuclear plants be built, where the federal government will guarantee the loans. Um, Peter, Peter, in the short time that we have... Why him and not Hillary? Exactly. Gotcha. Okay. If Hillary Clinton wants to take credit for her experience and working with her husband and as being kind of like a a co-presidency, that's the implication. She has to take credit for some of the programs that I think have been disastrous. GATT and NAFTA have been a hole in the bottom of the bucket that have drained not only millions of American jobs, but literally bankrupted millions and millions of farmers in the third world who have been overrun by industrial corn and cotton. If you're wondering why all the Mexicans are here standing on the street corner looking for work, it's because we flooded their country with industrial corn that we can sell for less than they can grow it. So there's there's that program. Then there's the telecommunications program, which allowed uh, major media companies to buy the same television, radio, magazines, and newspapers in the same market. And so instead of 23 or 24 corporations, which owned all of the 5,500 media outlets in the United States, we now have three. So basically, when you turn on your radio or your television, you get one corporate voice. There was the finance blah, blah, blah act, where they basically defanged the SEC. And so one of the reasons that you have all these Wall Street scandals is because the Clintons never found a corporate or financial donor that they didn't love. Um, there was the 100 to 1 differential in the penalties for crack and powdered cocaine. Uh, a black kid caught in the ghetto with one gram of rock would get the same penalty 
that a white guy in the suburbs caught with 100 grams of powdered cocaine would get. This is from the so-called black president, whose administration put more young black men and women in prison than the Reagan and Bush administrations combined. It was the Clinton administration that ended Franklin Delano Roosevelt's social safety net. And when I was a delegate at the 96 convention, I challenged Mrs. Clinton politely, but I said, you know, what are all these mothers going to do? You're not putting any proviso in the bill for uh, daycare and child support and transportation. And her response to me was, I hope it'll be okay. And when I said, well, if it's not okay, if your gamble is wrong, you're not really going to pay the tab on this, are you? And at which point her, her staff whisked her away. So for my money, oh, and the final one was that it was Bill Clinton when he Peter, was... Peter, we have, we have 15 seconds. Okay. Bill Clinton threw the Democratic Party into the corporate sector, which is why the corporate party, the corporate Democrats no longer talk about minimum wage, worker safety standards, anything like that. So if you want Peter, Republican Peter, light, vote Peter. for... Peter. Yeah. Republican, I got, I understood. Very articulate. Love to spend more time with you. Thanks so much, Peter Coyote. Everyone, stay tuned. Lots more to go. This is Richard Green. <laughs>